All right, guys, I've made a decision. I've made a decision. This is a big video. So I'm letting all the sportsbook know, um, especially FanDuel, where the only sportsbook I really have open that, I, that I've used. I've decided that I lose too much. Um, I lose too much, and I'm staring at how to make money every day, basically, and how to do it. And I think it's not allowed. I think I'm actually going to get my account uh, banned or restricted just because the sports books can do whatever they want. And I guess, though, it's about time. It's about time that that happens, even though I'm a losing uh, losing wager overall lifetime of FanDuel by thousands of dollars. Like since 2015, I've lost thousands of dollars, not, not tens of thousands, I don't think. But like I've lost thousands of dollars, um, uh, you know, more than a thousand a year, I feel like on average. Uh, so it's unacceptable to me and I, because I'm spending all this time on this, I should be making money, but, but I'm bad at betting. So I've decided that I'm just going to do what I know will make money mathematically and use the algorithms and they're going to ban my account. I'm going to tell you what I'm going to do because I, I mean, I guess they can do whatever they want. So they're going to see that I'm going to win all the time and they're going to then obviously ban my account. What I'm going to do is sometimes calls arbitrage betting, but it's going to be single in-game arbitrage betting on the same site. Like I'm going to make it very obvious to FanDuel what I am doing. And I assume that they'll have to ban it just simply because it's too obvious. And I, and I know you're not allowed to do this, I think. It's not illegal, obviously, because anytime you make a bet on a game, it's not illegal through their site. Like it's their it's their fault for giving you the odds they gave you. It should never be illegal for you to make a bet, especially a bet that they can set the maximums on. But and it's not illegal, but they'll ban you because they'll understand that you know the secret to sports betting and that and that you're going to bet on both sides of the game when the lines are better than plus 100. And you're going to win anytime you get the opportunity to make a wager on one of these teams to do a, a, uh, a binary outcome of a win or loss. For example, uh, I'll show you which games I'm going to focus on today when it comes to hockey and when it comes to basketball, potentially. So let, let's talk about this. Um, basically, what happens is at the beginning of the game, a line is offered. In this situation, a line of plus 140 is offered for St. Louis. That is more than one to one. So if you have a hundred, if you say you have uh say you have two hundred dollars, okay, in your bank account, and you want to put a hundred dollars on two different outcomes, one on this team and one on this team, and you want to have more than two hundred dollars when you are done. So you want to bet a hundred on one team and a hundred on the other team. Well, if you win. The St. Louis game, you win $140 and you lose the 100 that you bet on Ottawa. So you end up with 140 net profit minus the 100 that you lost and you end up making 40 bucks and you started with 200 and at the end of the game, you have 240, okay? And you've made uh 20% ROI, essentially. Now, the key is, well, how can you get Ottawa at a line that is better than plus 100 when they are minus 160 right now? And the answer is, yeah, of course they're minus 160 right now because they're favored right now. Well, throughout the game, there will be ebbs and, throw, and the ebbs and flows throughout the game. And there's a potential that St. Louis might be up at some point in the game or even might be tied at some point in the game with a power play or something. And the line on Ottawa could potentially go above 100. So if you know which games will potentially have lead changes and fluctuations in lines because they might be close, it could go either way, and you can get a good line on both teams at some point in the game, you will make more money every time you're able to make a bet. So basically, when you start this game off by betting St. Louis at plus 140 with your 100 bucks, now you're just crossing your fingers and hope St. Louis does something good and at some point gets ahead in this game because if they do and it's later than the first five minutes of the game, you're going to probably be able to get a line on Ottawa that's plus like 112, plus 120, plus whatever. And whatever that plus is, is going to end up being a potential net profit amount because you're either going to win with St. Louis or you're going to win with Ottawa. So 
I, I've seen this watching games all the time in different sports being like, wow, I can't believe how much lines are fluctuating during the game. I'm like, I'm like, all this was, was a goal score, like, or even two goals scored. I'm like, the world shouldn't completely flip on its head because, you know, Nashville gets up to nothing in the first period or something. If that ha- or the other way, other way around, it would make more sense. But the world shouldn't be on its head if the underdog gets a goal in hockey. Like that absolutely happens all the time. So you have to find situations uh, where you can get a positive line and you think things might flip. This this is obviously another one. Like you you, you want to do this on any game where you can get a big line on one team, and potentially that team would be ahead and the thing would flip, right? So you don't want to bet the Edmonton Colorado game at the beginning because there isn't any juicy juicy line yet. Nobody's gotten up one nothing. But as soon as somebody gets up one nothing or you wait and see maybe it's two nothing, you get the other team at a huge line and then you hope the team comes back. So the only reason that the sports books might not ban my account is because technically there's nothing that says that a team that is up a goal is all of a sudden going to be a positive line later in the game when the other team comes back. That is obviously not a guarantee. Game flows are going to go in different directions all the time. The the benefit of using the algorithm to know which games are closer than the odds makers are saying they should be means that those games are going to be more likely to have lead changes and fluctuations in lines. So um, like, yeah. And it's also hockey. I also know it's hockey. Like you can see, you can't bet these games because the lines are not that wide. But apparently, you know, you bet Chicago and you hope they get up one nothing. And if you can potentially get Toronto to plus line. But here it's actually more difficult for for this line to change because people understand if Toronto gets down one nothing, they're, they're still going to be minus 150 or something. So you still can't bet it. So what what ends up happening is maybe these huge games, unless you're planning on a lead change here and a real fluctuation in line, this is actually not a good one to do the the arbitrage, essentially what I what I assume to be an unacceptable betting strategy from FanDuel's perspective, because I mean, I'm going to give you my results today with like a hundred bucks or something. I don't know. It's going to go straight up um, for the most part. Because you're going to get super juicy lines on certain teams at certain points in the game. So anyway, yeah, like, like I am starting off the game. Oh, it's Grice in that. Jeez. Um, boy, and you can do the same thing kind of with over unders, and you can change the over under offered also. This is totally going to be not allowed by them and i'm looking forward for them banning my account because i've lost so much money with them and so much time that i i am clearly going sports betting suicidal essentially which is i give up i've tried now i'm just going to do what i know will work mathematically and you'll see that and you'll ban my account because if everybody does it you're out of business And I think the only solution to this problem is you have to not have the lines fluctuate that much during the game. And they got algorithms doing that, which is literally taking in the money that people are betting on one team and the money that people are betting on the other team and the position of the game. And it's doing its own equation, which is why it plus the market of sports bettors are driving these massive fluctuations in line. Like if Nashville gets up to nothing in the first period, you are going to see Minnesota at a positive line because it'll be a two goal lead. So it's, you'll see, it doesn't happen every game, but it happens enough games. And if you start at a plus 175 and they get up, right. Maybe you wait until the third period. If they're still up in in Minnesota, it's like plus 350 or plus 400. Then you've got both sides of it and you're getting at least, you know, 75% uh, percent of a unit. Uh, or if this is at like 340, you're getting three, 3.4 times a unit, depending on who wins. And you don't care because you've got both teams. This has to be not accepted, but I'm fine getting my account banned at this point. I want to do something else with my life. And I want, I mean, I, I, I'm not going to use your service until you like give me time off or something like that. No, I'm not going to do that. 
I'm going to show you that there is a way to beat you every single day and you're going to ban me because of it. And I'm fine with that. That's, that's a, that's like a trophy that I can put on my mantle as I was banned from sports betting after telling the sports book what I was going to do, telling them that my algorithm is better than theirs, that their line fluctuations are going to be too distorted and that I'm going to make money basically every day. So we'll start with it today. I'll give you the results at the end of the night. I think I've got 150 bucks in the account. So we'll go with that. We'll see what that 150 bucks is at the end of the day. And we'll also see how many different games I took advantage of. And we'll see how fast they ban me. <laughs> we'll see that too. Because once they ban me, then I'm absolutely not doing videos unless people are paying me for the algorithms. Because I will not even legally... Like, or I will not have a service that will take my bets. That's what I'm going for here. I want to move on in life. And so I may as well go out with a bang here and beat the living pulp out of them. So what am I starting with? I'm starting with like, I'm going to do a bunch of games to show you how this works. Technically, I should try this. But man... But no, I said no, because we need a fluctuation. So we'll do Nashville. That can absolutely happen. Um, Minnesota, although Gustafson's good. See if he's going. But I'll try that one. And I'll try the St. Louis one as well, because it's a pick of the day. And I, and I think they might get off to a lead. The other ones we'll stay away from and we'll watch. What about college basketball? Where are we going to do this in college basketball? a sport where you're absolutely going to see fluctuations in lines when lead changes happen. How often does a college basketball game when it's close, not go through a lead change at some point, folks think about it. A significant lead change too, not just like I have a point. Well, what we do want to look for in, in college basketball is we want to look for where we can get big lines early. Although you're going to want to wait to live bet every single thing you're going to do here. Uh, because, because you're going to get such a different distortion in line. You're going to be able to get plus 200s and plus 300s on both sides of the game. I am going to laugh because I might get banned by the end of the... I'm, I'm probably going to get banned tomorrow night is when FanDuel will close my account down and pay me out and tell me not to use your service anymore. And I will be so happy that that happens. <laughs> so... Uh, what game am I going to do? What, what are we going to do? Well, let's look at all lines, open up everything. And we're going to start here at the top. <laughs> we're going to distort by money line descending. This is every single game. This is not games we're picking. Just want to check to, to see if any of these are bettable, like any of these teams. So a home team is always bettable. So here you have plus 500 St. Peter's against Iona. So I'm going to find that game. That's absolutely getting a straight bet right there. And then you just got to bet um, Iona somehow being a positive line at some point in this game. But that's okay. You also got cash out options as well. So if I don't like the way things are going and I can't get a bet on Iona because they get off to a 14 nothing lead and I'm never going to get a bet, Maybe I'll cash out the St. Peter's if they ever come back and kind of make it close and try to get some of that value back. But in college basketball, you absolutely take these. Bam, here's another one. Oh, no, that's not home, no. Uh, they're not home. But that, but but Bellar Mine is, is injured, and this is another one that, yeah, you can start with that. What about another home team? A little injured Nebraska. Oh, uh, but the Maryland is not in Maryland. Hmm. Um maybe all right so those are your big lines do any of these have positive margins and now we're going to open up and we're going to say let's go back to looking at the teams that this is actually favoring so margins greater than zero are these games um so you got away eastern carolina but they're injured um same thing here with Cincinnati, which is, by the way, the Cincinnati game is going on right now. It's us. Cincinnati versus Central Florida College basketball score. Um, Cincinnati versus UCF college basketball score. 
Currently, Cincinnati is leading Central Florida 59 to 54 in the second half. Seven minutes left, though. So this is a great example. So I can start with this game. And the reason why is because Cincinnati is winning right now. Now, I got the sports book on the phone. Don't have it on the computer. But I'm going to go and I'm going to find right now Central Florida, for example, is absolutely going to be an underdog right now, down five. They're actually at plus 220 right now, right? So what am I thinking? I'm thinking, I know this game's a super close margin. This is why the college basketball algorithm is so awesome. Because it's going to be right a lot. Let me explain why. So right now, it's plus 220 for me to get UCF down five with seven minutes left. I'll take it. I'm putting 20 bucks. Sorry, I'm putting 25 bucks down on it. 25 to win 55. So I've just taken UCF. It's actually, yeah, it pays, I'm, I net $55 profit on that $25 bet if they come back to win. So what do I want to have happen? I want to have them in the last seven minutes at least come back to tie. Because if they come back to at least tie, then Cincinnati's line will go from right now, it's at minus 295. It will change to a positive number. And any positive number, I bet 25 bucks on Cincinnati. And if they come back to win, I'll net a little bit of money. And if Central Florida comes back to win, I'm going to net the $55 less the 25 that I just wager on Cincinnati, which will leave me with a $20 profit, right? If that happens, I think so. Right, fifty-five minus twenty-five, thirty dollars profit, or I think I, yeah, thirty dollars profit. Um, so we'll see. And I mean, I'll do, I'll just do it in the video right now, and also talk about what other games because I'm actually going to make this bet. I am, I am so going to be explicit with Fanduel. Be like, all right, I made a bet. Like, there's no reason UCF has to come back. There's no reason Central Florida has to make this a closer game. That's where I'm gambling with my potential arbitrage wager, FanDuel. So tell me, is this not allowed? Because it is a gamble. I'm gambling that Central Florida comes back just enough for me to wager on Cincinnati. It's at, the, at the point at which I wager on Cincinnati, that's when it becomes something you want to ban me for, right? Because I know that I can't lose if I make any bet on Cincinnati if they're up money. If they're a positive line, so let's wait it out while we talk about other games because you know there's this is something that can happen in a few minutes. It's a five point lead, and I just want to show you what will happen because you're going to get cash out options too in the middle. There's, this is endless. So, do you want to take any of these games? No, line's not big enough yet. Well, what else is going on live right now? I'm just browsing for huge variations in lines. For example, IUP and Detroit Mercy. Uh, IUP is plus 480 and Detroit is, this game is tied 33-33 at halftime. IUP is on the road. Where are they? Where are you at, IUP? Do I not have, I hit them down here. So this is now, uh, now, oh yeah, we need to sort by margin so we know how bad that game is. Um, so what we're going to do is we're going to do back to margins greater than zero. And now more sort options descending by margin. I'm just sick of losing all the time. So I just give up and I'm going to essentially do arbitrage because I, I'm just ready. I'm ready to not have the, the option of sports betting anymore. So anyway, 33, 30, so they're plus 480. And th that is uh, better than they were. They're also injured. So they're they're fighting Detroit hard. This is a college basketball game where anything can happen. Now, if they get off to a lead, it's still going to be tough for Detroit to be an underdog at any point soon in this game. So this is not a good opportunity yet. Um, I, I, I think what we're going to find is that the ranges of the odds need to be closer unless you know something about what the outcome is going to be. Um, so, for example, UNC and NC State, great example. 
Great example. So this game is going on right now. The other thing I like about this is, oh man, it's going to be awesome when I get banned because I won't be able, I won't have the option of doing it. That's great. When you, when they make it like you, when they make it, you can't do it anymore. Then, then I, I, I can't like accidentally cheat and do it because there's no reason for me. That I can't, I can't even bet, you know, and I like, I like not being able to bet. <laughs> I really want to not bet, but the only way I'm going to do it is by beating them and getting banned. Cause that's a story that I'm, I'm proud of. So let's talk about what to do in the NC state game here. Right? So injured North Carolina state with a worst strength of schedule is home and therefore a favorite. Love it. So there's so many conflicting factors in this game that you know this game is going to be filled with more lead changes than an old corroded battery. Is that a joke? I think that's a joke. I've been watching enough um, uh, Vice Grip Garage to kind of understand something about combustion engine vehicles. Uh, anyway, yeah, there's going to be a lot of lead changes. Lead changers? A lead? Is a lead a part of a battery? I think it might be. Um, or it's just somebody who's who's the first person dancing, the one taking the lead, right? Anywho, let's talk about what's going on here. Well, NC State is up 32-31, and they are minus 170 right now, right at the end of the first half. And UNC is plus 132 right now. Now they're plus 114. Yeah. I was hoping that maybe NC State would get like a three or five point lead going into half so that North Carolina could be like plus 200, but they're only plus 114. So I'm going to wait. But as soon as either one of these teams, I do not care which one it is because NC State should barely win, but they're a little injured. So it just smells like lead changes all the time. It's like the, the new guys have to learn how to win and there's going to be lead changes in the second half of this game. I mean... I can almost, uh, what are the odds that there isn't a lead change in the second half of this game, given that it's a one point game at, at half? I feel like the, the odds of it not having any lead changes are probably a hundred to one, something like that. There's only a hundred times that the team out of the gate never, ever, ever looks back in a game this close in the battle of North Carolina. I mean, they're just thawing out the ice rink from the, the Hurricanes Caps game last night, and they're playing right now. So you just wait, and I'm going to set a threshold of calling it like 175. And as soon as one of these teams goes up plus 175, I'm going to bet that team. And then I'm going to sit and I'm going to wait <laughs> until the other team comes back, and I'm going to bet. Uh, I'm sorry, then one way till that team comes back, and then I'm going to bet the other team when their line goes above won anything basically but you then have this craft of like if it's if all of a sudden things really shift you know say north carolina goes down like like five or six and they're plus 220 and then all of a sudden immediately after that they come back and take the lead and then north carolina state all of a sudden becomes like 140 but it's moving up faster do you wait or do you just take it at some point you definitely just take it at some point but the question is how long do you have to wait in the game to do that to know that you are securely going to be able to secure a profitable wager at some point i am so excited to see how fast they ban my account because hey, this is as obvious as can be i am publishing a video telling you guys i'm going to bet this way and I don't see it. I definitely don't see it being illegal. Absolutely not. It's not illegal to make a wager with your own money on any team to win on, on your sports book. That, that cannot be illegal if you have no impact on the game or anything. If you're just making bets, absolutely 100%. It's, it's legal. It's just, it's, it's frowned upon because it's, I think it's a secret of winning and, and how you can always beat them because of the line fluctuations. So that, that's another game I'm going to be paying attention to. And I'm, I mean, so, so how do we lose, right? We lose if I'm wrong and there's never a fluctuation or if I don't pull the trigger on, on the, the secondary bet to profit at some point, I wait too long trying to get a good line and then I lose my opportunity, which you still don't lose your opportunity entirely. You always can hedge it by betting something, even if they're minus 110, even though you might be a small loser, if you get that team, you still have the opportunity to hedge slightly. 
all the time. Uh, so very interesting stuff. I, I really don't know how fast they're going to ban me, but I really think they will. I haven't really looked into the super detailed explanation of what arbitrage is because I've heard about people doing it across different sites. If you do it on the same site, yeah, they're going to monitor your activity and they're going to see you're doing it this way. And they're going to be like, well, he's going to win overall. So we're going to ban his account. Good. Just in the message you send me when you ban it, be like, listen, the activity you're doing while completely confined to FanDuel, we found to be arbitrage style. And we expect, you know, we, we don't like to honor those type of wagers because, you know, we understand that you know how this works and we don't want you to steal our money every game by just by taking advantage of our crappy line fluctuations that are too broad. <laughs> our fault. So we're going to ban your account. I'm okay with that email. I'll put, I'll publish that email on my YouTube. Be like, yep. See, I was too good for the, for the sports books. And I don't think there's anything super, super duper special. I think I'm just figuring it out now. And I think I have a, an advantage using the algorithms to find these games that are going to be close and generally going to have lead changes. And generally, you want a game that generally has lead changes that are going to be broad lead changes. Also, you want one team to be up by 10 and the other team to be up, up by 10. That's the best kind of game to wager on because you're going to get massive, more massive fluctuations in line. So is there anything else I want to talk about? Um, we have a bet open, right? I made a bet on UCF. They are down five, okay? with three minutes left i haven't been paying attention so we have to keep an eye on that game because we need ucf to come back so that cincinnati's line gets hurt and it's not doing that so we might lose on our first one so if they're going to ban me for arbitrage what about when my arbitrage bets are bad <laughs> do you not they probably just ban you when they when you start taking a lot of money off them is what happens they're just going to look at your account. Like, why is this person taking money? Oh, they're betting both sides of every game. Like the most obvious thing ever. That's fine. I want to get good enough to do that and then get my account banned. That's my goal. So good luck, everyone. May all your picks be winning and may your accounts stay open if you want them to. And may they be closed if you wish that they be closed because you win too much. That's a fun way to go out sports betting. Too good for the sport. I'd be happy with that. So we'll see if we can get there. And I'll let you know how it goes at the end of the day with the recap video of how all my arbitrage crazy bettings went. All right, good luck. Now, your picks, be winning.